Hello! Welcome back. We are now on part 11 of Let's Play Dark Souls. So, uh, if you remember, last time we found a whip, and I went and whip, whipped and stepped off of the ledge down there and died. So, my souls and bloodstain are down there. Um, I'm actually not going to go for them. We're, we're just going to forget it. It was only a few thousand souls and one humanity, but I, this is the proper way to go in the level. Um, jumping down there is kind of like a shortcut detour kind of thing, and um, I figured let's just go through the proper way. Uh, I think if you work your way down, you'll just pop out somewhere. I don't know exactly where, <laughs> um, but I'm sure we'll get there eventually. So coming through here, we don't have a boss. We have more platforms and ladders. Awesome, right? Uh, we do have a few more new things as well once we get to them. So, down here, I think we're gonna run into. Ha! A chaos bug. Yeah, so these things are looking real ugly. They like. It's like a fire tongue or something, I don't know. But, uh, like I said, these guys are chaos bugs because they've been. Um, they've been, like, affected with the power of chaos, uh, which we'll learn more about soon. But the source of chaos is. Um, is, is that way. <laughs> Don't let me underplay it. But so it's, uh, it's like one of the primordial forces of Dark Souls. Uh, and chaos is actually what the demons are. So anything chaos, we get bonus damage on right now. So everything in this area is going to just melt to us. And I think even... Oh, dang it. There was one more blood art guy. Let's just go kill him real quick. Oh, oh no. Oh, no, no. So I don't actually have many more of these. Actually, I got three more. This won't be that big of a deal. So let's make our way back up there and actually kill him. All right, let's uh, try to time it carefully here. And dang it! <laughs> All right. Well, once you're toxic, you can't do much. And I don't know if they can actually drop the blooming purple moss. So. I think, uh, so there's one part still to come where we're going to have to deal with a whole bunch of them at once. Um, so here's the Wanderer set, actually, and uh, this is an another contender for cool ninja-ish armor. Uh, and that weapon, the Falchion, Falchion, I don't know exactly how to pronounce it. That's like a nice sort of, one of the better dex weapons, actually. That you can just sort of swing and uh, spam really fast, and I guess I can showcase it real quick. Let's see here. So this is just like the meme weapon of just R1, 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 <laughs> and you can just win the game like that. Uh, and oh, oh, whoa! Oh. So actually, that was another cool thing. When you're using a curved sword, instead of doing a kick, you'll do like a slash and backflip kind of thing. But um, yeah, as you can see, if you get your stamina really high, you can and you just put a bunch of stackers for damage, like uh, like power within, or make it like a lightning weapon, or just all sorts of like random min maxi kind of things. You can uh, just turn yourself into a little magic bullet blender kind of thing. Slice and dice your way to victory. So, just uh, kill that one. Watch out for the mosquitoes, by the way, which are some of the most annoying enemies in the game. Uh, we're getting lucky now, but normally it's like nearly impossible to hit them with a melee weapon. Uh, it's actually great if you have uh, a bow and arrow. You just sort of lock onto the mosquitoes and just and down they go. But yeah, you have to just sort of improvise with a melee weapon. Um, so yeah, we've finally reached the bottom of the cesspool, which is Blight Town. And once you're in here, as you can see, uh, not only do we move slow, but all these waters are poisonous. So this is finally the time to bust out that rusted iron ring I was talking about, because that's going to let us just walk around no problem here. And literally this whole area down here, um, this gross swamp, is why we uh, actually went through the trouble of picking up the rusted iron ring just to get past this area. Like, there's going to be a few more spots where we need it, but like this is always what I have in mind. Because um, like I said, you know, this is one of those breaking points of Dark Souls, and if you come down here and you have to slog through the mud on top of it, like, that's going to be a rough time. So just kill these things real quick. 
And let's rest at the bonfire before we die here. And yeah, this is gonna be our little outpost from here on out in the in the descent to madness. So uh, let's see here. We are gonna want to be human. So let's go ahead and pop a humanity, and then rest at the bonfire and reverse our hollow. So real quick, let's go investigate down the hallway there. Let's see what we can find. Um, nothing like too special and nothing that we need, but definitely worth showing off. Uh -huh, we get this sort of cool arena place. Uh, this is actually where we fell and died. Um, I can't actually angle the camera high enough, but the whip was right above us. But uh, anyway, in this chest here, we'll find a dragon scale. Now, what dragon scales do? Um, they're like Titanite, but for dragon weapons. Um, there's only a few dragon weapons in the game. We actually got one, the uh, Drake Sword. That's a dragon weapon. Um, I know I mentioned like it's like it's gonna be that good forever for the rest of the game, but that's not technically true. You can slightly upgrade it with dragon scales, but um, it, it still won't scale with your damage with your stats. I mean, so it is still pretty limiting in the long run. But there are some other dragon weapons in the game that are better, um, that are worth saving your scales for. So moving on this way. We're gonna get a visit from someone. Yes, so here's another NPC invasion. Man Eater Mildred. And she comes in over there, yeah. So we'll let her come to us. And uh, we'll see how this battle goes. Um, now, some people speculate that when Laurentius said that, oh no, she'll eat me, they might have been talking about her, which, you know, um, is very understandable considering her name and her being much more clearly a woman, but um, I think it is still technically the uh, the butchers that we fought earlier. Um, either way, not too important. Uh, once you kill him, we can get a little bit more humanity and get her butcher knife, which uh, is another just weird weapon. Um, it's basically a great sword, but I think it has like some extra... There's like some something special about it. Let me see here. Uh, do do knife, knife, wielded by the undead man-eating cook, lurking in the depths. More a tool for subduing, preparing live catches than an actual weapon. Uh, yeah, okay, I don't think it does anything special. I know in Dark Souls 3, or maybe even Dark Souls 2, it's got like this bonus effect where you can like sharpen it to make it do more damage or something. Or it like drains the health of the enemy and gives it to you. Um, I'm not entirely sure. Um, I'm not super knowledgeable in every aspect of the game. Um, and that brings up a good point. Um, and if, if you guys hear me say something and it's wrong, um, I very, very, very much encourage you to um, bring it up in the comments. You know, let me know, because I definitely don't have all the answers. And I do want to make sure that, uh, you know, people watching are getting quality information. So definitely point things out. And um, if you do, I'll verify it. And if it turns out I was wrong, then I'll talk about it in a future episode, and I'll even give you a shout out. How about that? Uh -huh. Now, if multiple people point out the same thing, and there's enough of you, I may not be able to get to everyone, but I'll do my best. Um, not that I'm even like popular enough <laughs> to have that problem yet, but um, hoping one day I do. So now we're gonna just sort of do a quick run around the swamp here, and uh, sort of pick up all the items that we want to get. Um, and let me think for a moment. Um, I think, actually, let's take a quick detour up this way first. Because um, this is actually the way out of the level. Um, like I said, we don't have to backtrack all the way through the depths once we're down down here. This will give us a shortcut. But um, on the way up, there's a slight detour for a very nice item that I don't want to miss. So let's uh, go get that. So yeah, just jump, hop on the wheel here, and you'll just sort of uh, take an elevator up. Um, it seems a little scary, especially because of Dark Souls' weird physics, but it ain't so bad. And I think, too, if you... Let's see around here. Um, oh, let me just find a safe spot and cure my poison. And, ah! Camera... Yeah, okay. Everything about this place is annoying. Um, <laughs> Let's uh, actually equip some normal poison moss. 
which we actually do have plenty of, so let's not get stingy with that. Now I do have one more blooming moss, which I want to use very carefully up ahead, because we are definitely going to need it. Uh, now if we go this way, kill this thing, and go up through here. Ah! Yeah, there we go. So if we go through here, I think... Oh, well, right, we gotta go up one more higher. <laughs> they can see us, but we can't quite get them just yet. Uh, if we climb up this way... Oh yeah, so right here. If you notice too, um, where I'm kind of pointing the camera, that's that dog there on the wheel. Um, he is what is powering the wheel. There's no flowing water. Um, that's, again, another sort of developer joke. And, um, dang it. <laughs> Put my shield down. Uh, no big deal. Let's just uh, take him out and not waste a second. Oh, they do drop blooming moss. Awesome. And actually, you know what? While we're here, let's uh, try out this, maybe. Aha! Yeah, without a projectile, this part can be a lot more annoying. Uh, okay, hold on, hold on. Heal up a bit. <laughs> um, actually, let's cure it. And see if we can not die. Okay, be very careful here. Pretty good. Bring these pots, because I nearly fell off there. And let's just quickly clean up this last guy. And yeah, if you're a super pro, you can just sidestep all of the, uh, the darts, but not quite that pro. So there was an item back there I wanted to grab before we head down. And if we break through this junk here, um, we'll find another soul. So, let's see if we can chuck some fireballs here. Um, now, these being the fire dogs, they do have a... I don't think they even hit them. <laughs> yeah, they're weak to fire. Or not weak to fire. They resist fire. Anyway, so let's not mess around too much with that. Um, this part can be a little dicey. Depending on how much they want to swarm us. Uh, let's try to get a plunging attack here, actually. And miss the attack, and... Oh, God. Okay, okay, okay. Stay calm, stay calm, heal. Dodge up, dodge, and attack where we can. Remember, never panic, guys. It's never a good idea to panic. Just assess the situation, prioritize healing if you're really low, and usually things will work out. Um, I get those guys, I think we can just ignore. Um, so these two are guarding the real prize for this whole detour. And if we take them out, We'll find another Firekeeper soul. Yep. That means once we get it back to our Firekeeper, she can upgrade it for us. So, uh, we're done in this little area. Um, we won't be coming back up the wheel until we're all done down here. So now, let's head back down here. Um, we'll just rest. Maybe level up? Yeah. Get that intelligence up real high. So, let's go grab a few more things in the swamp. So, let's see. We ultimately want to go that way, right over there, where those spikes are. Um, so we're going to sort of head there now, grab, so head over there, and then we'll do like a nice big lap around everywhere. And so, uh, you'll notice we got more of these ogre guys, and um, the ones carrying these rocks, be careful, because they'll actually throw the rocks at you. Just like that. And they'll do plenty of damage. They'll pick up another one right away. Okay, and then watch out for this attack, because that will not be a fun time. I believe they can even like sort of use it as a shield, so you gotta be careful. But they go down pretty easily. Um, there's like a whole squad of them garden over there. They're a little bit more annoying to deal with. Um, but anyway, as far as what they were defending was the Great Club, which uh, is basically a giant stick. <laughs> it's it's just like a pretty decent strength weapon, actually, but we're not going to worry about that too much. Um, it is separate. If you kill the guys with the sticks, there is a small chance of them dropping their actual 
Plastic, which um, is very similar, but it has poison damage on it, so that's kind of cool. Um, but we're not interested in that. We're, uh, we're going to be a swordsman. Uh, so let's see here. Okay, so right there is the other variety of enemy you'll find down here, which is just a big old leech. Um, they're not too bad. They can be a little, a little sketchy in large numbers, but I think if we're careful, we'll be fine. And uh, one thing to point out, the route that I'm sort of taking here, um, and you don't have to take this exact route uh, if you're trying to be efficient, but basically kill all the leeches you can down here, because they also, like the blobs, they drop large titanite shards and green titanite shards. So um, you can basically just rest at the bonfire, run around, kill all the leeches in like two minutes, I want to say. Hopefully you get lucky, get a few shards, and then ah, and then upgrade your weapons. Um, so yeah, normally you don't really have to do that, but you know, if you're one who likes to sort of grind and farm for your things, then uh, this is one of the spots to do it, because in about half an hour to an hour, you'll probably be loaded up if you're, if you're like using a build that's going to use maybe even two or three, maybe even four weapons, um, you can get it all done down here. Which I'm not going to do because uh, we're using Black Knight weapons and those use Twinkling Titanite, which we will not find here. So yeah, there we go. I actually uh, got lucky there. Got a large Titanite shard. And the nice thing is that when they drop green shards, they're going to drop five at a time, which if I'm really lucky, they'll do so I can showcase. Uh, okay, this is probably the sketchiest area. If you piss too many off at once, you'll get swarmed. But they uh, they go down pretty easily, like I said. So no need to worry. I uh, will just finish these guys off with their sword. Uh, one other thing to be mindful of is that they do have an attack where they sort of spray some juice at you, like that, right there. And if they hit you with that, it uh, it'll actually corrode your weapons durability, which kind of sucks, but um, it's not too bad. As long as you like, make sure to actually repair it at the bonfire, because you can repair on your own. But if it breaks, you have to take it to a blacksmith. So don't do that. Ah, oh god, oh god, I'm not dead. No, I'm not dead. I'm not dead. God, yes. Uh, these guys will chase you down. <laughs> so be mindful of that. And if you're only backing up. They can definitely catch it. And if you don't have the rusted iron ring, they will definitely catch up to you. Uh, right here we have the server. Uh, this is actually an interesting weapon. I think actually this is the sword that has that draining effect. Um, yeah, so it'll restore your HP. So um, yeah, if you're using this with that ring that we found uh, two episodes ago, with the ring of the evil eye, I think it was called, you'll uh, you can you pretty much won't need Estus uh, now. I haven't ever actually done that, so take that with a grain of salt. As far as like, I'm sure you'll need to use Estus at some point, but you'll definitely not need to use as much. So that's most of the things. Okay, we have a few more leeches over here. Ah. Okay, quick heal. And there is somewhere I want to go soon. Just kill this guy real quick. Now, is there anything that way? Uh, just some more leeches that are defending an item. And a green titanite chart, okay. So, that's kind of a hint that killing these guys will get you them. But, um, like I said, we're not here to grind. We're just sort of picking up all the one-time things, and then we, uh, we never have to come here again. Um, actually, that's not true. But we don't have to come here for grinding, at least. Um, so we just have this one more area up here. Where we're gonna find a very unfortunate fella who uh, has a plank shield, um, which is that's actually the if you start as the depraved class, you um, you get that you, you're naked, you have the plank shield and a club. And I think there's actually like a funny description on this thing. Uh, makeshift shield built from wooden planks provides minimal protection, but at cost of moderate humiliation. Yeah, so let's uh, put that on for a bit. And as you can see, it's just like. 
but um, it'll it'll work. It's better than no shield, if that's what you're going for. But um, yeah, so that's it, right? Uh, wrong. We have a hidden wall here. Um, we have seen a hidden wall before, but um, we're gonna see something here. It's just uh, twin humanities, right? Um, real easy, real done. Um, no, wrong again. There's actually another hidden wall. You know, like who would have thought? Why would the developers do this? Um, <laughs> so, very likely to miss that. Uh, my first playthrough, I didn't even find the first hidden wall. But uh, we're going to come poke our heads down here and see what we can find. Uh, this is the Great Hollow. Now, this entire area after that first hidden wall is completely a uh, secret area. Um, as in, you don't have to come down here to beat the game. And um, most people won't even know about it. But here we are. Um, there is a bonfire here, so let's go ahead and light that just in case. Just in case I mess up this next part, uh, we actually don't have much to do in here at all. I just need to uh, just sort of we're gonna poke our heads in, see what we can find. Uh, there's just one item I want to go ahead and grab, which we can get if we do a barrel roll right into here and stick the landing. Yeah, there we go. Okay, let's heal up, and we're gonna find the Clarenthy ring. Uh, this is a really cool ring. It's basically the Grass Crest Shield, but as a ring, it'll uh, boost your stamina recovery. And I believe the ring, this actually does a decent amount of stamina recovery as opposed to the shield. But um, if you have this and the shield and you use a green blossom, then um, you can just, you can do a lot of, get a lot of stamina recovery. Um, but anyway, we're not going to concern ourselves with that too much. Uh, that's all we need down here. Uh, if you want to keep making your way down um, you'll find a surprise I would not recommend doing this until later on when we're able to warp between bonfires uh, because yeah there, there's a bonfire at the bottom of this place but you'll need to uh, you'll need to trek your way back up without warping and that's just not a fun time at all so all right guys we're back here at our uh, checkpoint bonfire uh, we've pretty much cleared out this bottom swamp and as well as all the blight town. Like I said guys, it's really not that bad as long as uh, you know you approach it carefully, systematically, everything will go nice and smoothly. But you know if you're like me you're still gonna have a few deaths. Uh, but we're gonna forget about that. For now that's gonna do it for this episode. Guys I hope you had a lot of fun watching. I had a lot of fun making it as always. And uh, yeah I will see you next time. Bye bye.